Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews and How To, and yes, I am still sick, unfortunately, but the show must go on, and today we are taking a look at a PC which actually we built on the channel a very, very long time ago, I think it's like five years ago or something. This PC was built for the place that I actually work on a weekend, so this is a motor parts and dining. Feel free to drop in and say hello if you're passing on a Sunday in the Bristol area, or you just want to spend some money, I'm sure the boss will be very pleased, and maybe it can help him to afford these repairs. I joke. This is a freebie repair, or potentially it will be at the moment. So the PC, problem is with it, uh, just basically shutting down, restarting, that kind of stuff. So it stays on for a few minutes, or at least that is what I can gather. Turns off, reboots, does the same thing, stays on for a few minutes and then dies again. So as you're probably seeing from some B-roll, which uh, hopefully has come out okay, you'll see how I actually received this PC. Now this is in a very busy auto parts shop. There's lots of uh, dirt, grime, dust, etc. Yeah, you know the usual thing. So this PC gets somewhat neglected. Um, I'm paid to work in the shop, not to repair PCs. So I tend to leave it alone unless there's something which I can do, which is obvious. But it has got very, very dirty, as again, you're probably seeing for some B-roll, which is initially my primary concern. Now, some of you may or may not know that dust and debris, dirt essentially, is actually conductive because it does contain moisture. And with the humidity that we have in the United Kingdom, the mixture of humidity, dust, and all of it becoming conductive can cause to be very hazardous for a PC and basically create short circuits or little electrical arcs which can confuse the bejesus at the PC and kill it off. So I went through, did a, uh, a really thorough cleanup of this PC, power supply, cooling fans, motherboard, even got the uh, the brush attachment. And I must say as well, thank you very much to Colin Hilton for providing this little portable battery rechargeable duster. Actually very handy to do. If you didn't want to go through all the hassle of kind of plugging in a mains powered one, very handy. It does lack some of the power that you'd get in some of its mains powered counterparts, but certainly does get the majority of the dust out. You can go over after with a um, sort of damp cloth or something after to get rid of any residue. And also looking at the uh, the front panel, the front panel was absolutely horrendous. I'm not too sure if there was any air getting in from the front at all. It was very severely caked up with dirt and debris, so not a lot of airflow either, so potentially we could have some temperature issues. But hopefully, now we've got everything cleaned up and tidied, or at least to the best of our ability at the moment, I still am considering taking the power supply apart, which generally you should never do. I have given it a thorough clean externally, uh, and using the air blaster to try and get rid of any debris. So hopefully that has cured the problem. So I've got the PC cleaned up, got it connected up, we've got a monitor here, got a keyboard and mouse. So I'm going to fire it up and uh, see what actually happens, see if it works, see if it stays on, and see if we can see any obvious signs of a problem. So we've got power to begin with, which is always a good sign, and there isn't a plume of dust coming off of the fans, which uh, is also a very good sign. For those of you that are wondering what case this is, I think this was the Game Max Kamikaze was a long time ago. Yeah, this is the Game Max Kamikaze. It's a very nice little case, actually. I liked it a lot when we did the review, and it uh, seemed to have done a pretty good job. The air filters have seemed to have done a reasonably good job, clodding up all of that dirt and debris. Uh, seems at the moment, from the monitor there, we are doing a disc check at the moment. So that is a, a good sign in itself. So it's doing a scan disc of the main drive. There is only one drive in here, which is a, I think it's a 240 gig Kingston drive. I think it's the A400. Originally the drive in there I think was a smaller drive, maybe a 120. I think that at some point failed previously, so I did upgrade it to a 240. There's very, very minimal room taken up on this PC. It's essentially for looking up auto parts using things like AutoCAT um, and going onto kind of websites for windscreen wipers, light bulbs and all that kind of stuff. All of which motor parts fit, and so do I if you come down and visit me on a Sunday. So I'm trying to angle the monitor up so you can actually see what's going on without it being kind of too uh, blown out. That is a struggle. There's a lot of black in this particular image, so uh, yeah, the camera is struggling a little bit with the ISOs and what have you, but we'll see what happens. So yeah, it says it's fixing stage four. Uh, it says it's got about half an hour left, so I'm going to leave it to do its thing. In theory, if there is still an electrical problem with this, even just doing something in the BIOS or doing something as simple as this kind of DOS-based type thing, doing a scan disk, that should give it long enough to see if it's actually going to fail. So I'm going to leave this running and we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so we're back and the uh, system has come up and it is appear to be working. It is appearing to be working, whatever. My brain's not working very well. Anyway, the system seems to be absolutely fine, although I have taken a look in the event logs. Now this is something you should really consider doing. If you're having problems with a PC 
and maybe you, you find it the problem goes away or maybe the problem is reoccurring whatever the case might be it's always worth taking a look in the system event logs especially the system section of the event logs for windows you can see what is going on now in this particular instance uh, we seem to have a reoccurring issue with the amd ryzen master driver v20 now with every update of the chipset drivers for the amd software there is a new version of it, so V10, V20, V30, etc. They carry on. Normally it goes up in increments of 1, so 17, 18, 19, etc. You get the general idea. So sometimes, because of the way that Windows works or the software gets kind of installed, AMD don't always have the best drivers, let's be fair. And Windows isn't much better either. So it appears that there is an entry in the registry which is telling Windows to look at the Ryzen Master Driver, V20, which potentially does not exist anymore. So what we might need to do is to reinstall the AMD drivers just to be on the safe side. And then we can go into the registry and go into the current control set and actually remove any registry entries for previous versions, just so that Windows doesn't try to load up previous version, which is no longer there because obviously when the AMD driver updates, it kind of replaces the previous files. Hopefully that makes some sense. Uh, I'm gonna hook this up to our video capture device now and I'm gonna do some screen capture so you can see what I'm actually doing as I go through that process. Okay, so the computer is back up and running now, just on a reboot after a Windows update. So we're gonna go to the AMD site, and this is a, a Ryzen 3 2200G. So that's got the Vega graphics on board. So we're gonna get all the AMD drivers, just make sure they're up to date before we go ahead and remove the registry entries for the previous ones. So we're gonna go for download Windows drivers. That will download the AMD installer. And we can just allow that to run, click install, etc., etc. This is pretty straightforward stuff. So at this point now, it's checking the PC's hardware for driver and software compatibility. Okay, so it's found the AMD Vega graphics and it's offering up the Adrenaline 24.1.1, which is recommended, which is an install and also an upgrade. So we've got additional options, full install. You can if you want to do a factory reset. I'm not gonna bother, I don't think that's gonna be fine. Uh, and we'll allow AMD to do that. So we'll click on install. Hopefully it will install some, ah, there we go. Yeah, it wants to install some chipset drivers as well by the looks of it. So yeah, it'll update the uh, power plan, GPIO driver, etc., SM bus driver, all that kind of stuff. So we'll click on install. When you go through the installation process, you may find that your screen may go blank or your mouse and keyboard, if they're USB, may stop functioning briefly especially when it does the chipset drivers because the chipset controls the USB in general, although some of it comes straight off the processor as well. And now it's doing the AMD graphics. Okay, so we've got there, oops, something went wrong. Error 205, AMD software installation completed successfully, but Windows update may have reverted your driver version during the process. So we can get more details or just close. So let's just close that and uh, we're gonna do a reboot and see what happens. Okay, so we might have to uh, disable Microsoft installing WHQ drivers and all that kind of stuff. So what we want to do is to go into hardware in the system properties and go into device installation settings. You can just type this in from the start bar and you've got the option here to, do you want to automatically download manufacturers apps and custom icons that are available on your devices? For some reason, turning this to no sh might actually help. So set that to no and we'll try and run the installer again. Okay, that's a good sign. It looks like it's actually uninstalled the driver and then reinstalled the driver. So we had the, uh, the screen flicker there. That is a great sign. And that is a good sign. Installation complete. So that worked out well. So now we can click on restart and hopefully this has fixed the problem and also updated the driver. And we still need to go into the registry to remove the options or at least the flags for it to look for the older versions. So let's restart the PC and then we'll do that next. So we're gonna open up the registry editor. We'll run this as admin. And now we have to navigate to a key and if I remember rightly, it is computer, local machine, system, current control set 01, and services, and we're looking for AMD. There we go, so that's the one, so MD Ryzen Master Driver V19, and also we've got V20. 
So V20 actually seems to be the newest one on there, so maybe we do need to keep that. Well, we'll, we'll get rid of the old one. Delete, we'll delete that key. So we've only got V20 to worry about. And I think we'll uh, we'll leave that as it is. We'll reboot the system and make sure it stays stable. But otherwise, I think that is actually pretty much it. Okay, I think we're actually done. Believe it or not, I'm almost 100% sure that the dust and the debris is actually what was causing the problem on this PC. It seems to be absolutely fine. So hopefully, as long as there's nothing else wrong with any of the other components or peripherals that are plugged in at their end, such as the keyboard, the mouse, the printer, those kinds of things, then I think it's uh, it's running pretty well. We've had this running now for numerous hours, and also I've run some tests. I've run the Crystal Disk Mark, also looked at the uh, drive health, that seems to be about 80%, so that's absolutely fine. The drive seems to be performing exactly as it should do. Also, I've done some temperature tests, and those seem to be absolutely fine as well. This CPU doesn't get particularly hot, and we have got a, quite a nice little Arctic freezer cooler on there, which seems to be doing a really good job. I am still tempted to take the power supply apart and uh, give that a good thorough cleaning just to make sure there isn't any other accumulated dust or debris in the power supply, which may have been causing problems previously. But I think ultimately, very much like a problem we had with the previous PC, dust is a very, very big issue with PCs. So make sure you keep your PCs nice and clean. I'll actually leave a link in the video description for the uh, portable duster, which uh, Colin sent over. Thank you very much, Colin. And also the electric one as well. So if you want to use a, a bit more power and you want the electric one, then the one that Ugly Bob sent actually a while back, I'll link that in the video description as well. And also a host of other tools and things which we use to try and fix these PCs, such as hardware monitor, crystal disc, all that kind of good stuff. Anyway, so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content than this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button and then hit the chime button and that way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.